So this is what is causing all this fuss. An old pamphlet from the CDC, or Center for Disease Control, which is an authority in the United States tasked with doing just that, what the name implies, preventing disease. Hey stragglers and tourists, my name is the iPad Cat, and in this video we're gonna discuss the question that is obviously on a lot of people's minds. Did that kiss infect Dina? Wait, 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 what? What am I talking about? Well, it all has to do with that pamphlet I just mentioned. What does it say? Diagnosis, treatment, symptoms, incubation, transmission? The two known ways to contract CBI is breathing the spores emitting by the cordyceps and contact with bodily fluids of a person infected with CBI, usually by being bitten. Hmm, bodily fluids. Wait, I think I'm onto something, guys. In all seriousness, though, does that kiss really mean DNA is infected? Is it really that obvious? Well, let's go back to the first game. What caused the infection in the first place? Well, our best indication is one of the very first things we can interact with in the game. The newspaper in the bathroom of Joel and Sarah's house. The Food and Drug Administration's investigation of crops potentially tainted with mold continues across the country. The mold was of course the cordyceps, which then turned the world upside down. It had mutated to jump from insects to crops and then to humans. This is the version of the cordyceps all infected individuals we encounter in the game suffer from. Except for one. Can you guess who? Ellie. That's right. The cordyceps Ellie is infected with is not the same as the one that everyone else suffer from. What the hell am I talking about? Well, I present you with this dialogue from the first game. The doctors tell me the cordyceps, the growth inside her, has somehow mutated. It's why she's immune. Yes, when Ellie and Riley were escaping from the Liberty Gardens mall in Left Behind and got bit, the version of the fungus that got inside Ellie's bloodstream was the one everyone else got infected with. But as soon as it came in contact with her immune system, it started mutating into something else. Just like it did when it jumped from crops to humans. In Marlene's words, that's why she's immune. Now, other than that, we don't know what qualities the new cordyceps Ellie is infected with has. Obviously, she's not turning into a mindless monster, but is it infectious? Yes, I know about that. Let's go! Stop! I'm infected! I'm infected! Really? So are you. But you can't tell me there's any evidence that David actually got infected after that, as a machete buried itself into his brain multiple times not very long after that. And the symptoms of infection is supposed to not start showing until one to two days have passed. So is Dina infected? Personally, I don't think so. I think there are too many variables to how the infection within Ellie works for it to be that simple. If it turns out to work the same way the quote-unquote normal cordyceps does, then yes, Dina is 100% without question infected. But as I said, is it really that obvious? Yes, I know that Neil Druckmann has said that he likes to hide things in plain sight. But this is more than just plain sight. It's like 30 seconds of the entire demo, and every person who's slightly above casual fan knows about the whole bodily fluids thing. I'd be amazed if they basically showed us the conclusion to the entire storyline about Ellie's relationship slash love life they said should have some role in the story of The Last of Us Part 2 in the very first demo of the game. Furthermore, let's say it is Dina's death 
that makes Ellie all murderous like we see her in the demo and the first trailer. Why in the world would she even be out for revenge then? If it was her own fault the whole time, why would she travel to a whole other state to kill every last one of them, who didn't even have anything to do with Dina's death? It doesn't add up. We know that it is a violent act that will set Ellie out on this journey. Now we don't really know what this act is, but let's say that, well, okay, Dina is indeed infected. Maybe she turns and starts an outbreak in Jackson that, and kills a lot of people. Sort of like the prison in season 4 of The Walking Dead. Maybe Ellie is exiled or can't bear to stay in Jackson after that and thus leaves. But still, how would that make her go out for revenge? Alternatively, maybe a faction like the Hunters or the Seraphites could attack Jackson in its weakened state when they're dealing with the outbreak. That could explain the revenge part. However, all of this speculation is based on basically nothing. I still think Dina isn't infected. Infected, dead or alive, whatever her fate turns out to be, I don't believe anyways she'll have a huge part in the story. Neil has stated that The Last of Us is about Joel and Ellie, not Ellie and Dina. Also we have the three new characters from the PGW trailer. If Dina were to stick with Ellie through the entire game, what would be the point of having Joel or them there? Of course, she'll have a great impact on Ellie and the narrative as a whole, like Sarah in the first game. I just don't see her physically having that big of a part in the story. But that's just what I think. Did you know that there is a The iPad Cat Discord server? I'd love having more people there, so go ahead and join it with the link in the description. I'd also appreciate if you followed me on Twitter, since YouTube is notorious for not notifying people when you upload. So by following me there, you'll get notifications whenever I upload or when I'm about to stream. You'll find that link in the description as well. Anyways, what do you think? Do you agree with my points? Disagree? Do you think Dina is infected? Tell me in the comments down below and let's discuss it. And until next time, have a great day.